Okay, today I'm going to try my first repair at my new workbench. And it's going to be the second Roland SK88 Pro I have. Now, if you watched my other video on the Roland SK88 Pro, then you'll know what this is. And I highly recommend you check that out if you want to know more about these. But basically, it's a sound canvas in a keyboard. It's basically a Roland SC88 Pro stuffed into a 37 key keyboard and it's really nice. I like them a lot. Now this being the second SK88 I have is important because it has both already been diagnosed and has an amalgamation of broken parts from two keyboards. The diagnosis for my first SK88 happened all the way back in January of this year, now nine months ago. The first keyboard ended up having stickers on the box and keyboard that indicated it was returned to manufacturing, meaning it was likely dead out of the box originally. It was also cosmetically perfect, further supporting that theory. While attempting to diagnose its issue by measuring some other parts, I brushed up against the main CPU in the keyboard and felt that it was abnormally hot. I then suspected that it was the problem at this point, but I didn't have a good enough scope or logic analyzer at the time to really test it. This is actually what pushed me to buy my HP 16500C later. But after I suspected it was a CPU, I started watching on eBay for a cosmetically damaged SK88 to transplant the logic board from. I wasn't very confident in my theory about the CPU since I couldn't measure it at the time and wanted a more guaranteed solution. Eventually, I got a keyboard that had been dropped and broke some keys. Once it got here, I swapped the logic boards and my first keyboard sprang to life. I hurriedly put the now doubly bad keyboard back together and focused on the good one for my main review. But today, we're going to attempt to repair the second one. The CPU can be replaced because it loads code from an external ROM rather than having onboard storage. So if my rudimentary diagnosis is right, we may be able to revive this by just replacing one part. All right, there's really not much to go over here, so let's just uh, start working on taking it apart. Now, the only thing I'm gonna mention on the off chance someone else is trying to repair one of these is the modulation wheel can be a little fragile because it's kind of complicated and it moves in all directions. So I'm going to take some foam padding and I'm going to put the wheel itself on that so it doesn't just jam into the work surface and get bent and broken. That should protect it. Yeah, there's little bits of the keyboard in here that I'm going to need to uh, manage. Oh, yeah, that looks important. Ah, a spring. Yeah, probably want that. Uh, I'll have to dig around in there some more, but right now I want to take a look at that. All right, this is slightly upside down, but this is the SK88's main logic board. Here is the CPU and the part we're going to be attempting to replace. Uh, we have some of the Roland custom chips in here. Uh, this is probably the main sound canvas processing chip and then some samples and other stuff here. There's really kind of a lot of custom Roland parts all over. Uh, but the main part that I'm worried about is a Hitachi CPU in H8510. Um, and I was able to find a replacement. The only real issue is that it is like a QFP 110 or something crazy like that. So I'm not exactly going to be able to solder it uh, or desolder it with a uh, soldering iron. And I'm going to have to use that heat gun I showed off in my uh, bench video. Okay, so there we have the original CPU in place. And here is the replacement. So it's looking like the one I got is probably genuine, which is nice because there were some rather sketchy looking ones on eBay where I had to get this. You can't get this new, um, unfortunately. So this is, I believe, a salvage part and some of the pins are a little bent weirdly. I'm going to have to try and fix those before I put this on here. Uh, but that looks like it's probably going to work out well. So now I just have to remove that one. Okay, now I want to take a brief moment here to explain exactly how I want to do this. Um, of course, I'm going to use my hot air station, get the chip hot, pull it off, and put the new one on. But uh, since this blows hot air out all over, it's not a direct heat source, it means other things around this will get heated up and moved around. Now, one of the ways that you work around this is to get polyamide or Kapton tape and try and block off the area around it. Um, but I had another idea that I kind of want to try, and 
that is to use some Teflon sheets and I'm going to attempt to cut out a little square to go around it with a hole in the center that goes directly over the chip and then I'll use the polyamide tape on that um, and then I should be able to use the reflow station uh, for all of the repair um, to try this out. Uh, that looks pretty good. Yeah. All right. Uh, let me get the iron warmed up here. And we'll go ahead and remove this thing. All right. Now I am going to attempt to fix this in place. All right, well, I don't see that going on there much better, unless this side maybe opened up a little bit more and I could get more adhesive to stick down, but I think that's going to be fine. Uh, yeah, oh, man. <laughs> I guess it's time to uh, give it a shot. It has been a while since I've used a reflow uh, iron, so I'm a little nervous about this, but just need to give it a shot. Well, all right, here goes nothing. It's uh, it's been a while. <laughs> Woo! Finally, jeez. I believe all of the pads are in good shape. All right, there we go. That is the chip removed. And uh, here's what it looks like before cleanup. So the old solder is still on there and is going to need to be removed before the new chip can be put on. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. So this pad right here maybe looks a little suspect, um, but there's solder on top. So I know that the pad wasn't just ripped off, uh, but everything else looks pretty pretty good i don't see anything that's of a real concern so i would say that that's likely to have been a successful extraction with no real issues okay next comes the ever so exciting part of cleaning it up now i'm going to be uh, working through this fairly quickly and with my extremely noisy solder fume hood here um so i'll just talk about this a little bit first i will be applying this to my unfluxed solder braid here and then using my soldering iron i will tap the solder on here and pull it off like that you do not want to drag across um, unless you don't want pads on there anymore <laughs> All right, I feel like that's looking pretty good there. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna do one more pass here uh, with a different tip. All right, this part's fairly simple. I'm just gonna go through each side one at a time here. And I just wanna make sure that this is all looking good and smooth. <laughs> all right that should be it all right now thankfully putting the new chip on is much easier than removing the old one um there are a couple of different ways we could go about this but uh, i think just going for the easiest simple one here uh, will probably work out and we're just going to align the pins uh so that they're all in the places that they should be with the pads um, and that looks like that's probably possibly it and maybe a little bit further back on this side um, and then it's just going to be soldering down one pin on one side and then moving over to the other side and soldering that one down so I'm just gonna go ahead and inspect this here a bit and then uh, make some minor adjustments and then tack it down on the opposite corners and then from there, it becomes an extremely uh, simple task.
All right, I have two corners down. Should be able to turn this and get some more and then definitely have it solid. Okay, that should be good. Yep, it's solid. All right, it's not uh, done by any stretch, but now it's on there and we can do a bit easier job. All right, I just noticed I wasn't recording um, and I've just been doing cleanup of the pins. Not sure when I last forgot to hit record, but. All right. The chip's down and I'm just getting the uh, pins cleaned now. I'm doing this by adding excess flux and then dragging the solder over to one side and getting it to stick to the iron. And I do believe that's it. I'll do some inspection and touch-ups, but that should be the new H8 510 CPU installed on the SK88 mainboard. All right, I've looked over the pins on the replacement CPU, I've cleaned it up, and I'm not seeing any issues. So I guess it's time to put this back in and see if it works. All right, I don't have it all put back together completely yet, but this is the moment of truth. If the display only half initializes the bar area, then it hasn't been fixed. But if it pops up and says SK88, then it works. It's fixed! Sweet! Oh, that rocks. Okay, that that's so cool. I fixed it. Wow. Keyboard's not connected, so that's not gonna work, but sweet! Well, uh, I guess I have to fix the bum piano keys now. Okay, well, I do very, very badly want to connect the ribbon cables for the keyboard to the main board and try and make it make sound. Uh, while I was flipping it over to do that, I heard something move inside, and I'm thinking that the second spring uh, for the two broken keys may still be in here somewhere, and I don't want to take the risk of shorting something, uh, since that is a piece of metal. So I think I should go ahead and start working on the keys that are broken, because the likelihood is that it's stuck somewhere in there or under it, and if I remove those, then I could probably get it out. Okay. This is going to be interesting. I see the spring in there. Excellent! The second spring, that would be the hardest thing to replace uh, by far on these, so I'm super happy to find that. After pulling out the keys, it took me a while to determine what would be the best way to repair them. The parts that are broken are small tabs that hook down into holes that are pulled against with springs. I eventually decided the best way forward was to design a 3D printed insert to be glued in that would replace some of the original material for strength and recreate the hook from scratch. I sketched out my plans for how to do it and spent about an hour creating the model. I spent so much time on it because I wanted to add more strength to them that wouldn't rely on the glue exclusively to hold them in. The two keys are slightly different and the model needed to be adjusted to fit the different shapes. A recent OpenSCAD update made this easy to implement and worked out well for this project. With the designs finalized, I started the print and modifying the keys to hold the new parts. Okay. Check this out. So the keys have been filed down and the parts have been printed and I've done a little bit of filing to get these to fit more correctly. I think I should probably file the black piece a little bit more, but that is totally going to work. The white piece fits even better. Um, this is basically perfect. I mean, look at that. That rocks. Um, fits down in there wonderfully. I'm very, very happy with that. Okay, now I want to test fit these with the 3D printed pieces in them. So we can do this um, without fully gluing the parts in. If you look at the front of these, you'll see that it's not actually blocked by anything. There's enough space in there. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a small dab of glue down here uh, where this comes flush to the front. So I'm just waiting for this to 
heat up and then I can do that and we can see how well these will fit in there and whether or not the extra space I have right there is a problem. So one thing that's crucial is that I need this to be flush or else it won't uh, align with the fronts of all the other keys and it'll look weird. So I wanna make sure that's good. That's more of a thing to worry about for the final uh, put together though. There we go. Okay, I'm just gonna show the black one here for now because the white one, I need to file a lot more material off of this. It just, it has to be able to fit straight down in and it doesn't, so. Uh, but the black one is a good test, so I think I am just gonna shave a little bit off of the front leading edge on both of the uh, parts here just to make sure that the spring fits because it kind of pushes up on it, but it also doesn't seem like a big deal. But when it's in the correct place, the glue broke on it because um, it's not on there very well, it it works it absolutely works so that's really nice um the other ones don't move up or down like this one does in the back but i think once the whole thing's put together it's really not going to matter so i'm not going to worry about that too much i think it'll be fine so uh yeah i'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and finish this off this i gotta file the front of this down because it's just it needs to be able to go straight down in and it's too long so uh yeah i'm gonna go do that then test fit the white piece i'll probably do that off camera and then we can glue them in permanently okay i've got these sized about as well as i think i'm going to so let's do this Okay, just gonna leave these to uh, set and dry or cure or whatever you call it for uh, hot glue. Okay, uh, these are done. I filed the white one down a little bit more so it fits better and I think I'm ready to reassemble this thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Let's put in the black 3D printed one first. So move the plastic out of the way. I'll actually get to fit the front end down here. Slide it in. Bingo. I will put the other black one in while I'm at it. Okay. Put the first white key in. Put the repaired white key in. And this is the tricky one, but there we go. And the final key. Now, oh, that, that lines up so well. The alignment of the the black key isn't as important since it's not directly next to the other ones, but that white one matches really, really well. So, okay, let's start putting the springs on now. Oh, those take a lot of force. Those feel identical to all the other keys. Um, the white one may be ever, ever so slightly pressed in, but you would really have to know to see the difference. Um, that's a success. They don't feel any different than any of the other keys. That's perfect. Oh, that's really awesome. Okay, I grabbed some silicone paste here. I was just gonna add a little bit around it just so it can kind of match the other ones or whatever. I don't know. I meant to put it on before, but I don't think it's that important. Okay, it's all put back together. Um, I have it powered up. It's connected to my audio recorder, and here we go. It works. So these are the two um, keys that were repaired and they are completely fully functional. Just playing this, I can't really tell the difference between the two. So, uh, well, between the, any of the keys. So yeah, that's a successful repair. Um, 
wow i i know i said i think i could fix this thing but i, I kind of didn't really expect it because it's just i mean <laughs> diagnosing replacing that i mean what are the chances that i got it right just by feeling that it was hot that's kind of crazy uh so yeah the keyboard it's it's fixed and working so uh let's play something on it Okay, there's just one last thing I want to do with it. I want to give it a little bit of a wipe down because uh, the case that this one motherboard has ended up in is somewhat dirty and I think it should just be clean. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of time into this. This thing is looking sharp now, so uh, I'm super happy with this. I can't believe I got it working. I know, I, I still can't believe it. It's just hilarious. I So I justified myself getting an SK-88 by saying, oh, I'll get a broken one, and then I'll fix it, and then that's how I can spend the money on it, because they're not inexpensive. And then uh, I couldn't repair this one, because... I mean, I thought it was a CPU, but I didn't really think that I was going to be able to fix it. So I bought the second one, which was this case, and just mixed the pieces together to make one that was functional um, with the justification that I'll sell this one if I got it repaired. Well, I got it repaired, and uh, now I have two SK-88s, and I'm not sure that I want to be down to one. <laughs> Because I, I, between then and now, I found out I really like it. So I'm not sure if uh, I want to sell it and uh, just be down to one, or if I want to have two and have a backup in the event that I accidentally drop mine down a flight of stairs. So I don't know. Uh, but that's pretty much it. This thing's looking much, much better now. And uh, yeah. All right. Well, I think that's everything for the repair on this thing i mean I, I really can't tell that those keys are even slightly different than any of the others so that was perfect and they're probably stronger now than any of the other ones so and it's a good thing to learn that a forceful hit in that direction is what kills these they're probably gonna last all day straight down but that way you shear off that tooth on the back and it's just done but yeah that's uh it's really all there is for this one. I've already covered the SK-88 in the video dedicated to it, so if you want to learn more about this keyboard, I highly recommend you watch that because it's it's a jamming keyboard. I really like this thing, so yeah. But uh, for now, that's it. Um, I'm going to pull this thing out here and go play with it most likely. So uh, yeah, if you want to... Uh, see some more stuff like this you can subscribe and if you want to support the channel i am on patreon but for now that's it and i will see you next time